When most people hear the phrase, the watched pot never boils, they hear a metaphor. But what I hear is a challenge. So I modified this burner such that it will boil your kettle just fine. But if it catches you looking, it shuts itself off. When I started this project, I quickly determined that I didn't want to use a burner that runs on gas, as making a mistake with a gas burner has potentially explosive consequences. So I used this electric burner I found on Amazon instead. In order to determine if the burner is being watched, I set a Raspberry Pi running facial detection using this USB camera. The idea is that if the Pi finds a face, it will deactivate the burner, and vice versa. However, when attempting to control the burner with the Raspberry Pi, I encountered a problem. In order to understand said problem, let's first review the two main types of electricity, DC and AC. DC stands for direct current. This is the kind of electricity that most batteries provide. Direct current also powers smartphones, computers, and the majority of intelligent electronics. AC stands for alternating current. This is the kind of electricity that the outlets in your house provide, and it's what most household appliances run off of. My electric burner runs off of 120 volts alternating current, whereas my Raspberry Pi runs off of 5 volts direct current. Here, we begin to see the problem. Not only does the burner use an entirely different form of electricity than the Pi, but it also runs on 24 times the voltage. This means that simply running the burner's power cables through the Pi would most likely release some magic smoke. The Raspberry Pi simply cannot handle the amount or type of power required to run the burner. We need to find a way for the Raspberry Pi to control an electrical load without making any direct connections to said load. Enter the relay. Relays are simple yet powerful electrical components designed for this very purpose. A relay is really just a switch that can be turned on or off. Relays have three main elements. An electromagnet, which is just a magnet that can be turned on or off by applying voltage, a switch, and a regular magnet. It operates like this. Let's say you wanted to turn this relay on. Right now it is in the off position, and the circuit is open, so no current can flow through. In order to close the top circuit, we apply voltage to the bottom circuit, thus activating our electromagnet. The regular magnet attached to the switch is then attracted to the magnetic field generated by the electromagnet, thus pulling the switch closed, activating the circuit. In order to turn the relay off again, all you have to do is deactivate the electromagnet. Notice, we have just turned a circuit on and then off again without ever directly interfacing with said circuit. The low power activation circuit on the bottom is isolated from the high power circuit on top. This is what makes relays the ideal choice for controlling my electric burner. It should be noted that real relays are somewhat more complex than the animation just seen, but they still operate using the same general principles. At first, I considered manually wiring a relay inside my burner. But after doing some research, I discovered that alternating current is very, very dangerous. I know, shocking, right? So instead of trying to make connections within the burner itself, I bought this nifty switchable plug bar that uses a relay to switch its outlets on or off, just like we saw in the animation. All in all, this is safer than wiring a relay to alternating current by hand, and it's plug and play with lots of microcontrollers, including the Raspberry Pi. Once I connected my Raspberry Pi to the switching plug bar, everything worked great. Whenever the Raspberry Pi found a face, it triggered the plug bar, which deactivated the burner. But I still felt like there was room for improvement. The biggest problem with this machine is that there is only one camera. So if you were to look at the burner when you weren't in the field of view of said camera, the Raspberry Pi wouldn't see you and the burner would stay on. We would then have a watched pot that will boil, which would defeat the purpose of this entire exercise. So, I decided that if this was worth doing, it was worth overdoing. In order to cast a wider security net, my V2 features not two or three, but six cameras placed around the perimeter of the burner. 
This allows for much better visual coverage than one camera can provide on its own. Although six cameras may seem excessive, it was actually one of the less expensive options, as these cameras are super cheap and I had most of them on hand already. One of the downsides to running facial detection on six cameras, however, is that it will take the computer six times as long to process those images, which means my Raspberry Pi 3B would take way too long to process all of the images. I suspect that the new Raspberry Pi 4 with 8GB of RAM may have been up to the task, but unfortunately, I didn't have one of those on hand, so I used this desktop instead. Since I no longer had access to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi, I had to find another way to trigger the plug bar. To do that, I simply slaved an Arduino to the desktop, then connected it to the plug bar. When the desktop detects a face, it sends a command to the Arduino, which then deactivates the plug bar. In terms of overall performance, the V2 performed quite well. Although it still has some blind spots, its visual coverage is a drastic improvement over the V1. Another great thing about this contraption is that you could easily invert the logic to create a safety measure, which would deactivate the burner unless it sees your face, making it less likely for you to walk away when cooking and burn your food. As always, if you think I've earned it, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell to turn on notifications. And if you want to help me create more content like this, please consider supporting me on Patreon.